Good morning, my friends, and welcome again from St. Joseph's Church in Port Hawkesbury. And again, as always, we're very happy that, uh, that we're able to provide this online liturgy for you, and we are very pleased that you continue to, to join us on Sunday mornings. Um, it's been, uh, well, it's a, lovely, it's a lovely afternoon. As you know, we record this Mass on Saturday afternoon, and uh, we post it for Sunday morning. And we have, um, we have a, great, a great crowd here uh, today with us. As we, um, as we go forward, just a reminder of a couple of upcoming things. Uh, beginning on the first Wednesday of October, we're going to be having the Rosary on Wednesday nights, and that will be online. That will be on our Facebook page and our YouTube channel, and we will be doing that for the four Wednesdays in October, as October is a traditional month for the devotion of, of our Blessed Mother. So we hope that you will be able to join us for that. And on the Saturday of the Thanksgiving weekend, that would be October the 10th, we're going to have a truck here in the parking lot. So for those of you that are, that are local, uh, we're asking that if you have some non-perishable food items that you would like to drop off, we're going to, uh, going to have a collection and bring that to our local food bank. So we're calling it Fill the Truck, and hopefully we'll be able to do that. Let us gather ourselves together today and prepare to celebrate this sacred liturgy. In Christ there is no east or west, in Christ no south or north, but one great family of love throughout the whole wide earth. For God in Christ has made us one from every land and race, has reconciled us through his Son and made us whole by grace. So Brothers, sisters, praise his name who died to set us free from sin's division, hate and shame, from spite and enmity. In Christ now meet both east and west, in Christ meet south and north, one joyous human family throughout the whole wide earth. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. It is good for us to be here. Let us continue to move through our, our time together as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries. And let us call to mind our sin. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have, Lord, have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us and forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God Amen. in the highest and on earth. Amen. Peace to people, Amen. to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. 
Let us pray. O God, who manifest your almighty power, above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us, and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, you object? O house of Israel, you say the way of the Lord is unfair? Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? When the righteous person turns away from the righteousness and commits iniquity, they shall die for it. For the iniquity that they have committed, they shall die. Again, when the wicked person turns away from the wickedness they have committed and does what is lawful and right, they shall save their life. Because that person considered and turned away from all the transgressions that they had committed, they shall surely live. They shall not die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, be mindful of your mercy. mindful of your mercy. Make me know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. Lord, be mindful of your mercy. Make be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. According to your steadfast love, remember me for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Lord, be mindful of your mercy. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right, and teaches the humble his way. Lord, be mindful of your mercy. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, then make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. 
Let the same mind be in you that was in Jesus Christ, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same, and he answered, I am going, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe. The Gospel of the Lord. Is that your final answer? <laughs> That's a tagline that, oh, I suppose it's going back probably close to 20 years. Regis Philbin coined on the uh, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire show, where contestants would have a series of choices presented to them as possible answers to the question, and they would give their answer, and he'd say, 
is that your final answer? It's kind of slipped into our lexicon of popular culture. And our readings today are kind of all about, you know, well, what's your, is that your final answer? We hear St. Paul today writing from prison, likely in Ephesus, in modern-day Turkey, writing to his beloved community of Philippi, kind of in the northern, northeastern part of what present-day Greece. And that was the first city that he and Timothy and Silas had evangelized. I think there was always a special bond between Paul and those people. You can, you can see the love that was, that was being shared in, in the writings back and forth. And so Paul's writing to them, and they know he's in prison, but he wants to give them this word of encouragement. And he sends them a greeting, but he's not sending them kind of like um, a greeting card greeting. It's not that kind of easy, simple thing. No, he says, really, this is my final answer. If you will, do not act selfishly. Don't seek praise just because you do something good. But act as God wants you to act in your daily lives, not just with words, but with your life and with your actions. St. Paul really is saying to them, my final answer to all your questions that you may have for me is Jesus. And his final answer to his own heavenly father, a resounding yes. That Jesus answered yes in his flesh and how he lived his life, even to the point of death, with every choice he made. His final answer was yes. And Paul says about himself, and that's what I'm trying to do. It's what I'm trying to live my life. I live like this to offer my yes to Jesus in every moment of my life. Is that your final answer? Is it my final answer? We get again the same kinds of question posed to us in the gospel. And it's a gospel with an interesting uh, history and setting because it's really born out of controversy. If you read what happens just before what we hear about these two sons today, we'll know that Jesus has just gotten to Jerusalem and he has cleansed the temple. He's overturned the tables. He's caused quite a stir. And the church people, the religious leaders... They're pretty ticked off. They're infuriated at Jesus. And you think about that. What a great irony is that. Because those church leaders, those people that were in charge of the temple, those scribes, those Pharisees, their entire lives, their sole mission was to enable people to give their yes to God. They were so immersed in the scriptures that they should have seen the hand of God at work in Jesus. Jesus says to them, you saw John the Baptist and you paid no attention. That should have enlightened them to see that God's presence was imminent. They should have been the ones to perceive God's prophetic action in the person and the work of Jesus. And all they gave was stubborn refusal. They would not make a choice that would sacrifice power or privilege. They wouldn't do anything that was going to hurt themselves. If asked what their final answer was to Jesus, it was a resounding no. So it's in this context that Jesus poses the story today with the two sons saying to them and ultimately to us that they, and he's really saying this right to the religious people, he's saying this to the people at the temple, that they and we can be like the son who blithely says, yes, I'll do what you ask. But by way of our lives, by way of our actions, by what we do, it's made pretty clear that our final answer seems to be 
No, I'll have no part of that. But Jesus says, on the other hand, and he's really sticking it to them. He says, all the ones that you've been rejecting because you perceive that their life is saying no to anything of God, you're so quick to judge them, they're the ones whose lives have been so touched by the power and the healing presence of God through Jesus that they change not only their minds and behaviors, but their entire lives. Their final answer? Yes. To the, to the life, the truth, and the mission of Jesus. The ones that at first blush, seem to have nothing to do with God. What's your final answer? What's my final answer? The reading from Ezekiel today reminds us that God gives us an inherent freedom to make our final answer. And we're called to make our answer, not just with our words, not with just the recitation of our creed, not by wrapping the rosary around our knuckles, not by just being here and going through the prayers and going through the motions, but by our life choices. It's got very little to do with what we're going to do on a Saturday afternoon or a Sunday morning. It's got everything to do with what we're going to do on Monday. And Ezekiel reminds us that God's invitation is always there for us to change. That we're so capable of growth, of receiving the life that God desires to give us. But sadly, we may just be too proud, too self-righteous to humble ourselves to the will of God. Think about other popular phrases that we ascribe to in our culture. My way or the highway. Stick to your guns. Don't back down. What needs to change in our lives that will enable us to give our final answer of yes to God? Because the essence of Christianity is going to be the answer, our final answer. Look, like the tax collectors and the prostitutes and all the rejects, just like them, we've got a past. We all got stuff that we're not proud of. We all have things that we perhaps we wish we haven't done. We may even feel that our life choices have brought us to a place of no return and that all is lost. And that we're forever governed by the bad choices that we've made. Or all the ways that we've refused God's invitation to act justly, to love tenderly, and to walk humbly with our God. But for those who have experienced God's healing presence, whose lives have been touched, they realize that anything is possible and they can walk in the newness of life. See, it's not just the story of two sons in the gospel today. It's really the story of three sons, isn't it? We have the two sons that Jesus talks about. But Jesus is the third son, the son of God. And like the show, who wants to be a millionaire, where we have to give our final answer, we're not alone. We have lifelines. Jesus is the lifeline for us. He helps us and enable us to choose the right answer over and over and over again. We continue to walk in that newness and trusting that God is with us. In reality, we may desire to give our yes, we may say it with our heart, but you know, life happens. We do falter. 
We need the humility to say we were wrong, we made the mistake. And we need to reach out to that lifeline, to Jesus. We may say no to Jesus at times because we're afraid. We may find it difficult to trust. But Paul reminds us that the one who is humble is the one who will be exalted. We're called to do the right thing. And the right thing is following the one who says simply, come to me. All that are labored and weary and overburdened, come to me. Take my yoke, walk with me. Jesus gives us that freedom. He frees us to give our yes by clinging to him. Our answer. He is our answer. walk in that way truth and life is that your final answer I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We pray now for ourselves, for all who are deemed unworthy, and for the entire world. For the church. That we may increasingly put on the attitude of Christ and empty ourselves so that God can raise us to a new life of faithful relationships and loving service. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, meeting at the United Nations. That God will help them listen to the needs of humanity and give them wisdom in developing policies that all ha may have food, safety, and live in peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. For integrity. That we may not merely speak of God's ways, but sincerely commit to living them as faithful disciples. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear Lord, our prayer. prayer. For migrants and refugees. That all who have fled violence, starvation, or persecution may find welcome and places of safety to live. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For peace in communities experiencing unrest and violence. That God will help us recognize the systematic injustices that exist within our communities and give us the courage to work for change and reconciliation. We pray to the Lord, 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 Lord. for all who are ill, especially Heather McKenzie and Abby Mackey, who have asked for prayers. That the Spirit will ease their suffering bring encouragement through the care of the Christian community and restore them to wholeness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. God of compassion, we turn to you as citizens of a world that values achievement and success. 
Help us to remember that you love what is right and just and humble. Make us aware of who we truly are. Show us how to live as you call us to live. And we humbly ask this in the name of your beloved son, Jesus, Lord, forever and ever. Amen. Sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your fear. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you've created rightly gives you praise. For through the, your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church. And recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, we may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, glorious martyrs, with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, when Joseph, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of your Lord, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Eucharist. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come, give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. As when the shepherd calls his sheep, they know and heed his voice. So when you call your family, Lord, we follow and rejoice. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. With joyful lips we sing to you our praise and gratitude that you should count us worthy, Lord, to share this heavenly Satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come, give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. Is not the cup we bless and share? The blood of Christ outpoured. Do not one cup, one loaf declare our oneness in the Lord. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come, give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. The mystery of your presence, Lord, no mortal tongue can tell whom all the world cannot contain comes in our hearts to dwell. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to You give yourself to us, O Lord, then selfless let us be to serve each other in your name, in truth and charity. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come, give to 
us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ to those to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. As I reminded folks at the beginning um, for our online um, viewers, um, on the Saturday of the Thanksgiving weekend, we will be having a food drive. And um, if you have non-perishable food items that you would like to donate to the food bank from 2 to 4 on Saturday afternoon, we're going to have a truck in the parking lot, and we'd like to be able to fill it and, uh, and just give that, uh, give that to the food bank. And also for the Wednesday evenings during October, as this is um, a month of devotion to our Blessed Mother, uh, our CWL and KOC will be leading the rosary online, and you'll be able to access that on our Facebook page and our YouTube channel that will be at 6.30 on Wednesdays in October, so starting October the 7th. Also on October 7th that morning, we're going to start by having kind of one daily mass a week and that will be downstairs in the Tebow room because uh, it's a lot easier to, to clean. Unfortunately, our numbers will be limited and you will need to phone the office beforehand. We can accommodate about 10 to 12 people down there. So we kind of apologize, but that's about the best we can do at this point in time. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved and strengthened me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. T'was grace that taught my heart to 
fear and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. The Lord has promised good to me. His word my hope secures. He will my shield and portion be as long as life endures. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. T'was grace that brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. When we've been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the 